Welcome to the Library Show. My name is Cindy Holmberg. February is African American History Month and your Cobb Libraries offer programs and resources for children, teens, and adults to learn about and celebrate the achievements of black Americans in U.S. history. To find a listing of these programs, go to the library website, cobcat.org, and ch check out our program calendar. In today's show, I'll interview Zelly Rainey Orr, author of Heroes in War, Heroes at Home, First Top Guns, which documents Ms. Orr's efforts to bring national recognition to contributions of the Tuskegee Airmen. Donna McEachern and Roxanne McGall will talk about love stories for adult readers. And Beth is back, and she'll highlight quirky, entertaining Valentine books for children. And Joe Lehman is with us, and she'll talk about multicultural events sponsored by the libraries. Now I'd like to introduce you to our special guest, Zelly Orr. Ms. Orr is a local author as well as lecturer, researcher, historian, and consultant. She broke racial barriers by being one of the first, fat, first of uh, five black students to desegregate Indianola High School in Indianola, Mississippi in 1967 and was the first black personal lines underwriter for Kemp Insurance Company in Los Angeles in 1977. She spent many years working to promote recognition for the achievements and contributions of black leaders and heroes, primarily the Tuskegee Airmen, the first black military aviators in the United States Armed Forces. During World War II, Ameri uh, black Americans in the U.S. Sta uh, in, in U.S. states were still subject to Jim Crow laws, and the American military was racially segregated. The airmen were subjected to racial discrimination both within and outside the Army. Her book is called Heroes in War, Heroes at Home, First Top Guns. Welcome, Ms. Orr, and we're so glad to have you with us today. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Great. Um, you know, you um, uh, have worked and had a family, uh, and then you got involved in researching these Tuskegee Airmen. What prompted you to do that and take on this uh, mission to gain recognition for the Airmen? Actually, it began in year 2000 when I was told by a reporter from my hometown of Indianola, Mississippi, that we had a pilot who was killed in combat. As a result of that, having grown up in a town of about 12,000 people, never having heard that story, I decided to find out where was he buried. So Ooh. that began the process. Wow, and when did this all start? In year 2000, and uh, when I was told that he was killed in combat and asked well, where, he's, where is he buried and was said, well, we don't know. I went home, asked my mom, you know, about this pilot. They had given me a name, Quitman Charles Walker. Found out my mom knew, of course, the parents. The parents were now deceased, but I knew his niece. And they told me, well, we don't know where he's buried. So I decided to try and find out where he was buried. In 2003, it turned up for me that he was buried in New Pre, Belgium, in an American cemetery overseas. Oh, wow. He That's... was never brought home. Interesting. Uh, I read your book, and the great thing about it, it, it kind of documents, it's like a journal almost, of your efforts over the years to uncover, um, you know, these achievements by these airmen. And there are lots of artifacts in the book, as well as, you know, um, you know the history. Um, there's letters, photos um, that really enhance the story um, that you've brought forward. Uh, could you highlight uh, maybe just uh, one of the things that's in your book? For I think us? one of the unique things about the book and the story, the first Top Guns, the war would end in 1945. The Tuskegee Airmen returned to the United States, went to Tuskegee, Alabama. In 1946, that program closed. The men were then transferred to Lockbourne Air Force Base in Ohio. They were there until 1949, July of 49. But in May of 49, the Air Force had its first ever worldwide gunnery competition. Blacks yes. were allowed to participate. And in participating, there were 12 teams. Seven flew jets, five flew conventional class. That's the propeller uh, aircraft. The Tuskegee Airmen won for the conventional class. 
not only did they win for the conventional class, they had the overall highest score of all 12 teams. They were presented a three-foot high trophy, and when I say they, the winning jet class winners and conventional class would share the same trophy, an elaborate three-foot high trophy. That trophy somehow came up missing for about 55 years. Yeah, so it was a treasure hunt. It was, uh, and especially when I would meet two of the three pilots who were the winning uh, pilots who flew for the Tuskegee Airmen. So meeting two of the men and hearing that story from them and being able to present them an artifact that they had not seen in all those years made it even more special. Yes, and there's a picture of the airmen and that trophy in your book. There is. Yes, it's wonderful. And uh, you've also put together a coloring book for kids. I have co-partnered with two others, Cheryl Henry and Troy Jones, and we created High Flying. Oh, that's great. And it is actually for ages 6 through 12. There are several uh, different levels of activities. So we're trying to inspire kids to read and themselves be create, uh, creative, along with being problem solvers. So our book, High Flying, is a wonderful activity book which highlights some of the activities of the Tuskegee Airmen. It's a great book. So they have fun and learn at the same time. Yes. That's wonderful. And how can people get a hold of the coloring book? They can actually, we have a website, legendsandlineage.com, or they can go to my website, firsttopguns.com. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, as well as re uh, writing your novel, you also write poetry. I do. Would you read a poem for us? Oh, I'd be honored. And I'm going to actually read No Greater Love, which is an award-winning poem in year 2000. It won the Editor's Choice Award from the International Library of Poetry. Yeah. No Greater Love. It matters not the battle's name, the call that came today, for someone's son, somebody's daughter to journey far away. On foreign soil and desert sand, miss the turmoil of war, one soldier falls his dream subdued beneath a shimmering star. She kneels beside him, then carries on with stars and stripes held high to a victory which knows neither color nor gender or the fear in the enemy's eyes. From dawn till dusk and dusk till dawn, a courageous vigil they keep, each marching to a different drummer, the vanguard for peace. Oh, that is just wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, a copy of your book, um, our viewers can get it in our uh, Georgia Room at uh, Schweitzer Library. The Georgia Room is the Georgia History and Genealogy Room uh, at Schweitzer Library. And you'll also be coming to the Schweitzer Library on February 12th at 7 p.m. And you're going to talk about your book and uh, talk more about the Tuskegee Airmen achievements. And, uh, but if folks aren't able to get to that event, um, how can they get a copy of your book? They can go to www.first, spell it out, firsttopguns.com. Or they can email me, or z at bellsouth.net. Wonderful, great. And if someone would like to invite you to come and speak at uh, a speaking engagement, how can they get in touch with you? Can I give my phone number? There is a cell number that okay. they can reach me through. That number is 404-376-1353. Well, thank you so much for being with us. This book is a wonderful book. Again, Heroes in War, Heroes at Home, First Top Guns, Zelly Orr. Thank you so much for being with us today. Ms. Holmberg, thank you. Thank you. Yes. And we'll be right back with more of The Library Show. So what you want to do is, have you already enrolled? You're doing fine. What did that just do? Select, Select the drop-down menu again. Okay. Okay. You're already enrolled. Oh, 
example here. So don't panic. Yeah. You're ready to make your payments. Okay. There it is. Oh my god! I really can't believe it. <laughs> That's awesome. Good for you. <laughs> Welcome back to The Library Show. I'm Roxanne McGaugh, and this is Donna McEachin, and we're here to talk about romance books or love stories for Valentine's Day. Our first book is The Ro <coughs> Rose Rosie Project. And Donna, why is this the perfect book for a Valentine's Day read? It is the perfect book for Valentine's Day read. First of all, it's brand new. It's on all the bestseller lists. It's a fast read. It's light. It's hilarious. We enjoy the characters. What makes the um, main char character different? The main character, uh, Don Tillman, has Asperger's. He is um, a geneticist in Australia at a university there. He does not know he has Asperger's. All he knows is that people treat him very differently. And tell us about the Wife Project and how does it involve into the Rosie Project? Well, because he's had such a terrible time dating, because of his extraordinary structure. Um, he decides that if, in order for him to get married, he needs to approach it in a very systematic way, the way he approaches everything else in his life. So he details the wife project, decides he needs a questionnaire that will help him to weed out all of the undesirable respondents. Do you remember <coughs> a question from the questionnaire, or a couple of them? One of my favorite questions He's had, uh, he's had a lot of bad experiences, as I said, in dating. Um, there was the apricot ice cream disaster. He names them all. There was the, um, the pig trotter disaster. So he decides that he wants to make sure that the woman is not a vegetarian, but because there's so many kinds of vegetarians, he wants to find out that she is not a vegetarian who eats fish occasionally, or a vegan, or a vegetarian who might eat chicken. So he puts the question on the questionnaire, and says, will you eat kidneys? Figuring that that will cover all bases. If she'll eat kidneys, she'll eat anything. <laughs> and he does eat anything. And he does eat anything, yes. But he eats brains, so. Uh, all right, and what's the um, advantage of, <clears throat> of dating or marrying a um, character like Don? Um, as a high-functioning Asperger's, he is so organized, he is so very reliable, uh, and that also makes him somewhat um, um, uh, intransigent. I mean, he's, he, he's not very good with spontaneity, he's not very good with change, but uh, this guy turns out to be not not what we think of typically as an Asperger's. He has a great deal of empathy. He does know how to feel. He just doesn't realize that he knows how to feel. And he can memorize anything. And he can memorize anything. Our next book is uh, Major Prodigy's Last Stand. <clears throat> Why is this a good Valentine's Day book and, um, and how does the use of British humor enhance the read? Major Pettigrew's Last Stand is a marvelous book. It was written by Helen Simonson. Um, it is British. It takes place in England with a cantankerous, crotchety old major who is very set in his ways. And um, the Indian woman he meets who sells him tea who opens up his world again. The reason this is such a good Valentine's Day story is because it's adults. It's not children falling in love. These are grown adults with families of their own. And they're both um, widows and widowers? So yes. They um, both have lost spouses? They, they've both lost spouses, and uh, they have both decided that they will probably be alone for the rest of their lives. Okay. Um, and what did your book group think of the book? The book group loved it. Uh, it's charming, it's witty, it uh, takes British humor at m mildly poking fun at the social classes, at the racism, um, all of the things that one would think about middle class British society gets overturned in a very polite way. We love the characters. Yes, very good read. 
Yes. Um, if you like a um, romance book with a humor, I recommend trying Jennifer Cruzy. Um, one of her books is Agnes and the Hitman that we have right here. Agnes and the Hitman by Jennifer Cruzy is an absolute hoot. Um, she is famous as the author of a cookbook about mob cooking because she had a lot of, um, she was raised by people in the mob. This is in uh, South Carolina, I believe. She is um, an excellent cook. She gets into some interesting situations. Um, kind of predictable, but funny. It's, it's predictable. It's a fast read. It's a light read. You laugh a lot out loud. It's just fun. It's something that you think of Valentine's Day as just being great fun. Okay, and you have two more books that you have quoted as saying uh, being a more satisfying read. Uh, the first one is A Reliable Wife. A Reliable Wife is not a typical love story. Um, we don't particularly like the characters. The main character advertises for a wife. He is a widower, he is the richest man in town, and none of the locals will meet his qualifications, so he decides to advertise in the Chicago newspapers for a reliable wife. The woman who answers um, the, the ad is not quite what we expected. What's good about this book and what my book group really enjoyed was, first of all, the writing was just gorgeous. The characters were very different. They had all been through traumas, through difficulties. As I said, we didn't like them, but they came to like one another. And we saw some, um, some real growth among the characters. So the hero, <clears throat> he advertises for a wife, and so does um, Don in the Rosie Project. Yes. And they both end up with somebody very different, different from whom they had expected. expected, yes. Okay, and your next book is uh, The Time Traveler's Wife? The Time Traveler's Wife um, is a story of devotion more than just falling in love, as some of the others. This takes place um, in the recent times, and a man has a genetic anomaly that allows him to travel through time. He doesn't know when he's going to, to travel. He doesn't know where he's going to travel. But he meets this woman. They get married. And we see her at various intersections through their lives. It's, the book skips around all over the place. He sees her when she's young, when she's older. She sees him when he's younger, when he's older. But the devotion that they show toward another and the way they live their lives and it's, it's wonderfully paced, so you never know what's going to happen yet. Make it a really good read for Valentine's Day. Okay. Did your book group like it? The book group enjoyed it very much. Yes, they did. Well, that's all we have for today. Please stay tuned for more from the Library Show. Seven thousand high school students drop out every school day. Let's catch them before it's too late. To start helping students in your community, visit boostup.org. Welcome back to the Library Show. I'm Beth, and today, in honor of Valentine's Day, I've brought some love stories. Mind you, these aren't your typical lovey-dovey, roses are red, violets are blue picture books. These are some somewhat unconventional romances. After all, to quote William Shakespeare, the course of true love never did run smooth. In Woof, a love story by Sarah Weeks, a dog falls in love with a cat. If that weren't bad enough, this dog and this cat don't even speak the same language. So when the dog tries to tell the cat that he loves her, all she hears is barks and growls. Needless to say, the cat is not exactly won over by the strange dog barking at her. Is there any way these two can learn to communicate by finding a common language? So what happens when one slug falls in love with another slug? They write love notes to each other in slime. Mary Lou the slug is in love with Herbie, another slug, and writes him a poem, but Herbie isn't quite sure which of the many nearly identical slugs is his secret admirer. 
a series of love poems and misconnections follows, but will Herbie and Mary Lou ever get to meet face to face? This book, I Spy, I Love You by Jean Marzolo and Walter Wick, is not only an I Spy book, but a beginning reader book as well. Each page has a series of items to look for in the accompanying photograph, and in this book, many of the items are somehow related to love. It's a challenge to find some of them, but whoever said that love was easy? There's also a board book called I Spy Little Hearts, and it's by the same authors, so even little ones can play a slightly simpler and much sturdier game of I Spy. What's not to love? In the book Moose Music by Sue Porter, Moose finds a fiddle, but no one seems to appreciate his musical efforts. Actually, that's an understatement. Everyone despises Moose's fiddle playing. Surely Moose will find someone who will want to share in his <clears throat> unique Moose music. This next book is called Sophie's Squash, and it was written by Pat Zietlow Miller. One day at the farmer's market, a little girl named Sophie picks out a squash to bring home. While her parents had expected to eat it, Sophie instead befriends the squash, taking it, excuse me, taking her everywhere. But what will happen as the weeks pass? Will this tale of friendship turn into just another mushy love story? Interspecies love stories are so hot right now. Like this book, Kate and Pippin, an unlikely love story by Martin Springett, where an orphan baby deer becomes besties with a great dame. This next one, same theme. Bogart and Vinny, a completely made up true story, or sorry, a completely made up story of true friendship by Audrey Vernick. A crazy happy dog named Vinny gets lost, but his enthusiasm never wanes as he trots into a nature preserve and excitedly befriends all the animals he encounters. His absolute uncontested favorite is Bogart the rhinoceros, who would really prefer just to be left alone. Can this amazing friendship survive? I laughed out loud reading this one, so I hope you'll like it too. Actually, I hope you'll love all of these books. For these and other books you'll love, visit your local Cobb County Public Library or check out our website at www.cobbcat.org. Don't be brokenhearted. There's more of the library show after the break. Did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? Totally. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. Totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you guys know statistically friendly kids have more friends? Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. Welcome back to The Library Show. I'm Julia, and today we have another special guest, Ms. Jo Lehman, who's gonna tell us a little bit about some events happening at the libraries in February. Welcome back to the show, Ms. Jo. Thank you, Julia. Do you realize this is exactly one year one ago year? that we were here together? One year. And we do have another great program planned for this year in February, February 8th mm -hmm. at the Schweitzer Library. And that's 266 Roswell Street, for all those who don't know. Yes. And we would like for everybody to come out and join us. This year, again, we have the awesome A.L. Burroughs Unity Drummers. Now, this is a group of young kids, very young kids, who uh, they play the drums it's and so some other stick instruments. So yes. much fun, and they're really exciting. And the good thing about it is there are no auditions. All you have to do is want to play. I didn't know that. And it's very young, the very young children. Such a cute group. You can tell they really enjoy it. <laughs> yes, yeah. and the audience gets into it, too. Absolutely. And this year we also have the High Energy South Cobb High School Platinum Steppers. Those are my, this group is my favorite hands down. I know, so when you amazing. see them, yeah, when you see them perform, you think they practice all year just for this event. I want to so dance. <laughs> yes, I want to dance when they dance. So they'll be with us again this year too. And we'll mm -hmm. also have um, saxophonist Raven, Raven Durr. Mm -hmm. You know, he wasn't able to be with us last year, yes. but he'll be with us this year. And we'll have uh, singers and other speakers and guests on the program. But it's going to be an awesome program. Now, you skipped one, and that's Miss Jo Lehman will be our MC, so we can't leave that out. You need all the, <laughs> you definitely deserve some kudos for that. Um, so that is Saturday, February the 8th. 
Is that right? right. From two to, four. two to four. And that's four. at the Schweitzer Library. That's our fourth annual mm -hmm. African American History Month celebration. Fourth annual. Fourth annual. Yeah. yeah. It's been a fun four yeah. years. And every year, I think it gets better. It gets, gets better every year. And uh, one more thing about this band is that the uh, Unity Band mm -hmm. has new members this year. Oh. Have, has more young members, and then it's awesome to see the young kids. Absolutely, uh, definitely a can't miss event. Um, the one thing we should also mention is that usually it's standing room only. Yeah. That's so, true. So That's definitely true. come early, grab a seat, and uh, and, and, yeah. and enjoy the show. So. Exactly, All exactly. Right. And you know, another special thing that we'll be highlighting this year are Cobb County First. That's right. African Americans. Mm -hmm. We have the first cheerleader, the yes. first African-American cheerleader at Marietta High School. I'm so excited. <laughs> Ms. Donna Sesson from the Sibley mm -hmm. Library, in case any of you know Ms. Donna. So that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Who else do we have? Um, we have uh, Mr. David Hankerson. Oh, that's right. Mr. David Hankerson. Absolutely. Yeah, county Can't manager. Out. We'll be featuring Mr. Hankerson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So there will be several firsts. And if you want to know other firsts in Cobb County, mm -hmm. come out February 8th, and we have special read posters for yes. them. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So check those out. Um, a couple of other events going on in February that we'd like to tell you about. We have the lecture series at Schweitzer Library on Wednesdays at 7. Uh, the very first one uh, it will be the Civil Rights Era in Atlanta. It's February the 5th. Um, again, at 7 o'clock, it's Dr. Ivy Holloman Way from Kennesaw State University. Um, on February the 12th, you'll get to hear Miss Zelly Orr, who you saw earlier in the show, and that'll be the Tuskegee Airmen in Georgia. That's February the 12th again. Um, we'll also have a speaker from the Georgia Department of Natural Resources Historic Preservation Division um, on February the 19th again at 7 o'clock, and she'll be talking about the Rosenwald Schools. And last but not least, we have Dr. Seneca Vaught from Kennesaw State University, and she'll be talking about the Gullah Geechee people of coastal Georgia and South Carolina on February the 26th. So a few other events that are definitely can't miss. So, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Now we have one other one that we want to talk about before the end of the show, and that's the Multicultural Fair. So tell yes, us about we, that one. We just, it's not in February. This is coming up in March, yes. but we want to give a shout out for that program now in February so you can get put this on your calendar. But it is a multicultural expo that's going to be held at the Schweitzer Library. And um, this program will highlight many cultures that we have living with us in our communities. Some of the countries that will be represented will be uh, countries in Africa, Mexico, Japan, China. And we'll have tables set up with artifacts, clothing. We'll have people dressed as natives from that country. And people can walk around and pick up artifacts, look at them, and get information about mm -hmm. those countries. And, and we'll also have... Um, the dancers, Swedish dancers, oh. are coming, and uh, in the planning will be food trucks outside the library so that you will have, be able to um, buy and taste food from other countries. Right. Do you think I can pick up a few dance moves from the Swedish dancers? Well, I'm sure you can. Yeah, I'm I, sure you can. That's probably not a good idea. High energy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that multicultural fair is March the 15th. March 15th. And from 12 to 3, I believe, is the time. Yes. And again, that's at the Schweitzer three. Library. Yes, yeah. and so stay tuned for more information on yes, that. Absolutely. We'll have everything on our website at cobcat.org. So, um, all right, Ms. Joe. well, thank you so much for being here. You're I welcome. appreciate that. And everybody, put those dates on your calendar. Absolutely, mark your calendar. Can't miss events. All right, so we'll be back with just a little bit more of the library show after this. Stay tuned. Shelters are the best places to find a new pet. What a perfectly beautiful little lady. That's where you'll discover healthy, loyal, and loving animals. Cute little rascal. Eager to become a part of your family. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Oh, ladies first. Be that person. Adopt. This is living. Hey, kid. To find out more, visit the shelterpetproject.org. Thanks so much for watching The Library Show. You can find more information about everything you've seen here on our website. It's cubcat.org. We'll see you next time.